first, I'm going to introduce you to Dr. Siller. Uh, Dr. Keith Siller is the medical director of the Comprehensive Stroke Care Center at NYU Langone Medical Center, an assistant professor of clinical neurology and psychiatry at NYU School of Medicine. Dr. Siller completed his neurology residency training, followed by a fellowship training in stroke and cerebrovascular disease at NYU Medical Center. After completion of his formal training, he's remained here with us. Dr. Siller is well known for his expertise in the stroke field. The Comprehensive Stroke Care Center has received the American Heart Association, American Stroke Association, Get With the Guidelines Stroke Gold Plus Achievement Award for the past three years, and for the first time ever, the Target Stroke Award this year under his leadership. These awards are a testimony to his dedication in maintaining and improving the quality and care of stroke patients here at NYU. He is a member of prestigious committees such as the New York State Department of Health Commission, the New York State Department of Health Commission Stroke Advisory Board, American Heart Association, and New York City Stroke Task Force, where his knowledge and expertise in the field directly contributes to the improvement and care of stroke patients across the state and country. Dr. Siller is the host and producer of About the Brain, series on Sirius XM Doctor Radio Show, a medical expert consultant for the New York State Academy Attorney, I'm sorry, the New York State Attorney General's Office and Fox, ABC, and CBS News. He has authored and co-authored several articles and participated in many clinical trials. For the past 20 years, Dr. Siller has worked tirelessly striving to prevent death and reduce disability from stroke by providing rapid diagnosis and effective intervention to people who've had a stroke through a multidisciplinary approach. And we're so happy he's gonna be speaking with us today. Okay. Thank you very much. That is actually the nicest intro I've ever gotten, ever. <laughs> and that was very much appreciated. But I have to thank, really, the people at our hospital because this is clearly a multidisciplinary approach. We cannot take care of stroke patients with just one person or one resident or one nurse or one emergency room doctor or one therapist. This is a group of people who have dedicated themselves and I will only take credit for helping us together achieve this goal and I thank my patients especially who traditionally come to the stroke awareness and have set up their own individual groups and it's really the patients that we care about that really make the difference here because if we can help people through this approach, we've really done our job and it hasn't stopped because it keeps getting better every year. We have more and more things to offer people and I appreciate you showing up today for your support. So this is our medical center. I have to change this slide soon because a lot of changes are being made. There's a lot of construction, I think all of which will be good. Uh, the, the thing that we're most looking forward to is a new emergency room, which will be larger. Uh, hopefully we'll have uh, separate areas for different kinds of presentations, including hopefully our stroke patients. Certainly pediatric patients will be taken care of in a different way. Uh, and I'm looking forward to the new construction and, and the expansion of our medical center. So today, uh, as you know, we uh, dedicate one day out of the year with the help of the American Heart Association to try to improve our public awareness. And we do our bit here, hopefully, uh, to try to teach the people who show up a little bit more about stroke so they can either help themselves or hopefully somebody else if necessary. And in fact, a lot of strokes are diagnosed by good-hearted people, people who are bystanders, people who happen to be in a public setting. And we hope if you yourself are not perhaps one at risk that you can also help someone else who might be. Okay, so as I mentioned, our stroke center consists of a lot of people. Uh, we have a team approach uh, and we usually go kind of in the order in which we use their services, but each one of these departments is very important, starting from the emergency room. Even before that, we have EMS, we have private ambulance groups that are very uh, good to us and bring us their patients and trust us with their care. And we have care that starts just from when you hit the door through your whole hospitalization and then beyond with rehab services. So we need to know what a stroke is before we start educating other people. We need to know what, what it is ourselves. And it's really quite simple. Strokes really come in two different flavors. There's a lack of blood flow, which is the most common type of stroke called an infarct. 
And then we have hemorrhages where the exact same area of the brain, instead of not having blood flow, actually the artery leaks. But in both situations, the blood does not get to where it needs to be. And so we have two types of stroke, ischemic and hemorrhagic. And we really need to pay attention to both types. Unfortunately, the hemorrhagic type strokes, we don't have the greatest care for, but the ischemic types we do. And in a few minutes, I will tell you about the clot busting opportunities we have to help those patients. Every minute, there's close to 2 million nerve cells that die. You have 14 billion connections or synapses that die between those cells. And you have over seven and a half miles of nerve covering or myelin that is destroyed every single minute. So this is why we have the urgency in stroke for treating the patient and recognizing their symptoms as soon as possible so we can intervene. Some very compelling facts about stroke. Um, we actually were the number three cause of death for a long time, and stroke has actually been downgraded, which is a good thing. It's now the fourth cause of death uh, because I think in part of better care, risk factor management, and treatments that we have available. So we've been demoted, but that's a good thing. Um, it's the leading cause, unfortunately, still of serious disability for adults. Uh, it is certainly one of the number one reasons for people going to nursing homes. Dementia and stroke, and sometimes there's an overlap because strokes can cause dementia, really account for a vast majority of people who are currently in nursing homes. There's 800,000 strokes every year in this country. Of those, 160,000 end up being fatal. So what does that mean? That means most people survive a stroke. So the disabled person who has had a stroke is really an important member of society, someone who needs help, someone who still wants to contribute, and far and away, luckily, more patients survive, but they survive at a cost. They survive with disability, and it's the disability that we're trying to focus on reducing. Every four minutes, somebody's going to die of a stroke. This is a serious condition, but thank thankfully, many of the strokes are preventable and certainly treatable if the patients come in time, and that's the key message. Now, we all need to know what the warning signs are, and I hope you walk away with a little bit of this that you can think about. Um, you saw in that video uh, that quick screening test, which is called FAST, uh, and some of that is included in here. But in a broad sense, there are kind of several very stereotyped symptoms that we see in patients experiencing a stroke, and you should know what they are. And the key word sudden, which you can't miss because it's in bright red, is supposed to emphasize the fact that it is an acute, abrupt, very quick change in somebody. Not something gradual, not something that happens over days, something that is a very quick difference like a switch flipping in most instances. So what could that be? The classic type of stroke that most people are aware of involves becoming paralyzed on one side of the body. Drooping of the face, trouble using your hand, trouble walking, all on either the left or the right side. So that's pretty classic. Most people recognize that type of syndrome very quickly. We also have syndromes where there's no weakness, but the body goes numb on one side. Sometimes not always a stroke, but can be certainly if the face, the arm, and the leg all have that sudden change that we talked about. People who have trouble in their behavior, they're suddenly acting odd or speaking inappropriately or not speaking at all, is really what we call aphasia, okay? Aphasia is a language problem. But to a layperson, they may not know what that means, but if you see someone not speaking properly, slurring their words, saying the wrong words, or not understanding you, this could certainly be a sign of someone having a stroke. Trouble with vision, either in one eye or both eyes, sometimes hard for the patients to pick up on, but many people do realize they're having a visual disturbance, think they should just go to the eye doctor and do that in a kind of casual way. Well, that's not how it should be done. If you have a sudden change in your vision, you belong in an emergency room, and we have to remind people about that. People who have dizziness, walking troubles, very sudden change in your balance. Sometimes these are benign syndromes, but sometimes they're not. And a lot of times those patients should certainly be at least coming to the emergency room or asking for help if they have a very uh, sudden acute change in their balance or very severe vertigo. Even though often those are not strokes, they can be. And the last category is more uh, of headache, which is a reference to hemorrhage. So we're not going to really talk about hemorrhages, but they are strokes. Most people think of strokes as clotted or blocked arteries, but hemorrhages are also strokes. Unfortunately, as I mentioned, the treatment for that is not quite as effective as we have for the ischemic type stroke. The risk factors are plenty, and this is just a small list. One thing that we can help people with is trying to find out where they're at risk before they have a stroke. So truly the best treatment we have is avoiding one to begin with. And our stroke screening today, hopefully uh, every year we pick out someone who comes in and has 
very high blood pressure readings, someone whose cholesterol is much higher than they realized, uh, people whose sugar is not normal, but they think they're okay, or they're even taking medicines, but the medicines are not even working or they're not compliant. So the best thing you could do to protect yourself is to know whether you're at risk to begin with, and the common, most common factor actually is hypertension. Hypertension is the leading cause of all types of stroke, both ischemic and, hyper, and uh, hemorrhages due to hypertension. We have behaviors that we need to work on as well, modifying our lifestyle in terms of being healthier. Uh, obviously, cigarette smoking, very treatable, right, is an enormous advantage if we can get people just to quit smoking. If I could pick two things on this slide, controlling blood pressure and getting people to quit smoking, that would probably cut stroke risk down tremendously. Now, there's a problem, though. The problem is, and the reason why we're having a day like today is that we still do not have good recognition as to what a stroke is amongst people in the general public. Even people who are very educated or, or have even had a stroke themselves before may still not know what a stroke is even when they leave the hospital. There's a big confusion with heart attack uh, and we had to work on that for a long time. People were not understanding what chest pain and pressure meant. They all attributed to indigestion. And I think we've done a good job there. But for stroke, because it's a more complicated illness and there's more symptoms that are possible, it's a little more confusing. So people don't know the symptoms. They also think that they're gonna go away, and sometimes they do. And when they do go away, we call that a TIA, but people don't act on that. They feel that they're okay, there's no need to tell anybody. That's a grave mistake because the TIA is a strong precursor to having an actual stroke and people need to tell people about that. The, the idea that there's nothing that can be done has changed tremendously. We're gonna talk about TPA for just two seconds when I'm done. There is treatment for stroke. It's not always gonna be a clot busting drug, but you need to know if you have all the risk factors we talked about and we can minimize your disability if you get hospitalized and receive the proper rehab. And Dr. Rashbaum is going to talk to you about that. The idea of a stroke as a dynamic process is kind of our current thinking. Uh, this is a slide, a cartoon of what a stroke is kind of like when the person first comes to us. The idea of a clot, a blocked artery, and then there's an area of the brain that is kind of dying. But not all of the brain is dying quickly. There are some areas called the penumbra, the part that is still salvageable, if we could undo that blocked artery, we can restore blood flow and potentially have that patient's stroke be much smaller than if we didn't intervene at all. So in the old, the old days, we could look at it, we could see it, but we couldn't do anything about it. Now we have the potential to unblock clogged arteries and reverse the stroke and at least minimize disability, but there's a price to pay because time is the essence. And there's two phrases that have come out of the National Stroke Association. One is the idea of calling a stroke a brain attack. Now, from a doctor's point of view, we don't really say that, but for the lay public, brain attack drives home the point that this is not a heart attack, it is an attack of the brain. And the time equals brain has to do with the message that if we don't get to you quickly enough, these treatments aren't going to work. So you have to be seen and treated quickly. Now, there's a drug called TPA, which actually came out in many years ago and was approved for stroke in 1996. That's quite a long time ago. This is not an experimental treatment. This is the standard of care for stroke patients, and we're gonna be very uh, excited about our opportunity to provide this, but you gotta come on time. If the patient is exceeded a three or sometimes four hour time limit, they can't get the drug, so we need you to show up. We have some cool pictures, some interesting radiology techniques now to try to visualize what the stroke looks like. In the old days, we'd have the scan on the left, the one on the right, which uses color and a contrast injection, and you see that big red area, you, you can't miss it. That's where the stroke is. We can actually do more pictures to find the blocked artery, and then we can actually sometimes call our colleagues from radiology to remove the clot in addition to introducing IV TPA through the vein. We actually have some very neat toys that have evolved where we can suction, aspirate, poke, pull, and get that clot out of there to try to get the blood flow going. So we have a lot of interesting toys. We've got some good medicines, but the bottom line is still prevention and knowing if you're at risk. So I'm gonna turn it over then to my colleagues and I thank you all for coming today.